Hi traders, this is Taylor from the tradinganalyst.com and I'm going to take a look at a bunch of charts here that have been requested from our followers here and the idea here is for you to uh, learn about my process and what I look for um, of course you know I look for a lot of other things when I'm looking at uh, stocks and the stock charts but this is a, a very nice broad touch of of what I look for and the levels that you need to pay attention to on stocks to use simple um, technical analysis. Um, and most of these stocks, I don't have any pre-conceived uh, ideas about them, so that's great because you're going to see me going over them live in real time. Um, so it's a really good learning opportunity and you should really um, take advantage of that. So the first one that's been requested is Starbucks and Starbucks obviously have some uh, notations here. Uh, I'm going to extend this downtrend line and I'm going to draw another one right here and that one's even better because we've got several touches right here. You can see a couple touches right there. I'll zoom in a little bit. There's a touch. There's a touch and then we're right at this uh, support level. This is the last line of defense right here, about $52. You can see that this is where it kind of bounced from over here, right there, almost right there, and then these last several touches right here that we've gotten recently, right here, right here, and then again today and yesterday bounce from this level. So if you're bullish on Starbucks, you really want to see this level hold and another reason why you want to see this level hold is because of these volume by price bars, okay? So volume by price is exactly what it means. You know, volume down here is volume uh, based off of time. So each bar down here represents each day. So today's volume of this day is represented right here by that bar, okay? And these volume by price bars over here a representative of volume at a certain price okay and as you can see right here this is a very thick range you can see the bars over here how thick they are how long they are rather um, and that's because Starbucks has traded uh, a lot within this range right here you can see that very sideways action you know obviously slightly down here um, on Starbucks but it is trading uh, very tight range and lots of volume here so another thing you want to note here is beyond this level here look at how deep the volume by price bar drops off once it breaks below that fifty two dollar level the volume as support drops off significantly so it's not going to be that much support and the reason is because we basically made a vertical move up here for most of 2015 and a vertical move is very bullish um, but at the same time if the stock consolidates to the downside it doesn't really have anything to um, support it on the way down okay so that's what you want to look for you want to see this 52 level hold on Starbucks alright the next one we're going to take a look at is uh, Disney All right, so Disney here, I'll zoom in a little bit right here. So we've got this downtrend line right here. There's a touch, couple touches, several touches here. And then you can see we tried to break over it these last several days, but couldn't. And we're trading in this tight box right here. So bulls, you want to see this low hold, hold right here? You want to see today's lows hold. Today's lows do not hold. More than likely, we're going to see a pretty big uh, breakdown here on uh, Disney. We've got a little bit of support below us, uh, right around 89, 89.50, but nothing uh, crazy. So we're in a downtrend. You know, here's a high, here's a lower high, here's a low, here's a lower low, here's a lower high, and then we've subsequently made a bunch of lower highs right there. So if you're bullish, you want to see this downtrend line break 
if you're bearish, you want to see this continuation uh, below these levels. If we break below these levels, uh, today's lows, we close pretty much right at the lows. If it continues and makes a new low tomorrow, more than likely we're going to see a nice breakdown to the downside. Another thing that you want to note here is we're trading in a very tight range and most of the time that we trade in a very tight range and you can see that by the Bollinger Bands. These are the Bollinger Bands, there's the top Bollinger Band, the lower Bollinger Band, and the when a stock trades in a very tight range like this and then we see a break outside of that range and most likely it's going to be to the downside tomorrow, this ends up being a buildup of energy for that next move uh, in the direction that it breaks. So we're building up energy, people are selling or buying, um, and you really see what was going on within this box by the initiative uh, break. So look for that um, coming up soon on Disney. Next one we're going to look at is UG. All right, so UG, uh, let's back it up here a little bit. Uh, so UG, first thing I'm seeing here is major resistance up here at about $18. Of course, that's, you know, um, pretty far away. It's, you know, $3.25 away from us. But uh, definitely something that will come into play. Um, and that you definitely need to be aware of. Um, another thing with this stock right here is it's pretty a pretty low volume stock. You know, today's volume was uh, 2,600 shares that were traded today. So that's not a lot of um, volume here. And that matters because low volume stocks um, are easier to manipulate and the technical analysis on them is not as reliable um, if it were, you know, let's say Apple or, or something like that, because you know the amount of money that moves in between, or I'm sorry, in and out of the stock um, is is not as much, and the more participants you have, um, the better technical analysis works. So, with that said, the biggest thing that we're seeing here is this resistance here. I'll pull it out to the weekly time frame see if I can see anything seeing some pretty decent support kinda right where we're at you can see right there and also a little bit below right there so right where we're at there's some support right there you can see the volume by price bar pretty thick in this range you can just see a lot of trading in this range between fifteen and thirteen dollars so that's what you want to look for on uh, UG. Again, it's a low volume stock, so um, for me, I wouldn't really uh, want to rely heavily on, on that one. Um, the next one we're going to look at is uh, I'll look at uh, when. I really want to stick to uh, one stock per, uh, per person. So we'll keep it on the weekly time frame uh, right here. So we've got a nice uptrend right here and uh, another thing that I'm noticing here is some resistance right about here about eleven dollars you can see resistance right here early to, I'm sorry late 2015 and then here uh, earlier in 2016 again we ran into it right there but if this breaks and if this level up here breaks about 1150 uh, from these highs right there we should see a really nice breakout this looks like a nice breakout um, uh, if we clear that uh, 1150 so look for that um, potentially uh, to happen I'm not saying it's going to happen but if it does clear that 1150 it should see a really nice breakout so uh, look for that let's see if I can see anything on the daily time frame Yeah, just a, you know, a little bit of support right here, as well as the 200-day moving average right around 1025, based off of these highs right there, and then it retested it right there. So uh, look for that on 
uh, Wendy's. Next, we'll look at, I'll choose this one, HNR. All right, so HNR, um, obviously somebody has requested this uh, before, um, a while ago it looks like. So I'm gonna readjust this annotations right there. And let's see. So yeah, main thing I'm seeing here is this uptrend line right here, here. There's a touch, several touches right here. So that's going to be a pretty decent area to look for. Um, a bounce right around 65 cents if it makes its way uh, down there. I'm going to look at the weekly time frame. See if there's anything that I can see right here. So that's a decent break over this downtrend line. Several touches here, here, right there, right here. You can see some volumes coming into it as well. But again, this is another uh, lower volume uh, issue as well. So take it with a grain of salt. But with that said, we do have that uptrend line right there, right here, I'm sorry, uh, that matches up perfectly with that um, 65 cent mark right there. So look out for that. All right, next, let's take a look at MGW. Uh, MGW, hmm, I have a feeling this is not what you were uh, requesting, just because it's MGW.V. Uh, this is another, you know, penny stock, uh, lower volume uh, issue right here. So I'm not really going to be able to say anything about that. You can see you know, this isn't very regular trading. This is what happens um, when you have a lower volume issue. It's very easily um, manipulated. So, um, But typically, when you see uh, after, you know, this stock has run from, uh, you know, since October of last year, we ran from three cents all the way up to a dollar right here. And typically when you see a lot of volume here um, after a big run-up. So these are at, uh, you typically see heavy volume either at tops or at bottoms, okay? So this is clearly not a bottom, um, but what it can potentially be is a top. So definitely just from that fact alone, I would warrant caution um, also because it's, you know, a penny stock. I don't know anything about the company, so um, you know, don't send me any uh, hate messages, but uh, that's just the way that I'm seeing it right here. All right, next one we're going to take a look at is start from the bottom down here, um, NSU. And NSU, let's see what we can see here. So NSU, first thing I'm seeing is we are making some lower highs right there. So there's a downtrend line you can play with. Touch there and there, here, several touches right here. So that's going to be resistance. Another thing that I'm noticing here is we did break this little trend line right there. You could probably extend it to these lows. Yep. So trend line break right there. We broke the 200 day moving average. And we're pretty much right at these lows right here. So uh, not necessarily an area where I would, you know, initiate a new short. I'd rather initiate a short up here at, you know, near 315 um, because that's a lot better risk reward. If it breaks over the trend line, that you, then you don't want to be short that stock. Um, as far as support, I'm not really seeing anything that great. Um, the next level really below us is these lows near 230, um, but kind of just, you know, in the middle uh, range right here and uh, not really an area where I would want to initiate a new 
long or a short. All right, let's take a look at GE. And GE, kind of a sideways trader. Um, you know, I've obviously looked at this uh, stock plenty of times. I look at every single S&P 500 um, daily and weekly chart um, every single day. And obviously I look at um, GE uh, and I look at the Dow um, as well, all 30 stocks of the Dow. Um, so we broke the support right here. So that's not a great sign. We're also below the 200 day moving average up here. Next nearest support I'm seeing is right around this level right here, about 2760. You can see that it was former resistance right there and lots of trading against it for resistance right there. And then you can see once we broke over it, retested it and broke out pretty nicely right there. So on this first initial touch, we're probably going to get um, at least some kind of a bounce. But uh, overall, you know, this is not really a great mover. This isn't a great mover. Um, in my opinion, you know, these moves are kind of uh, erratic. Um, and, you know, you can't really get that great of um, a picture from it. And that's okay. So you don't have to trade every single stock that's out there in the market. And it's okay to say... I don't know where the hell this stock is going. And if someone is uh, tells you that they can tell you where every single stock is going, um, then they're lying. All right, so let's take a look at the next chart. Let's cover uh, Nugget, because that's going to be good. I know a lot of people are going to want to see uh, the gold chart here. So, um, you know, this was a rising wedge pattern here. Um, I pointed that out on social media uh, when it did uh, break right there. Obviously, at, the, at that point, I got a lot of flack for it. Uh, but at this point, um, you know, we're hearing crickets. So um, these patterns do work, especially on uh, pretty parabolic uh, moves by gold. So anyways... Um, we broke this support right here at about 17.50. Uh, also blo broke below the 200-day moving average. You can see that right there. And we're kind of right at a support, I believe. Let me see if that lines up. Well, not quite. So a little bit lower, about 10.50, is where that decent support is going to be. And that's from uh, resistance right there, resistance, resistance, and then we broke over it. And then I'll zoom in a little bit and retested it successfully as support, support, support. And so we're coming up to that level. And that might be um, a decent level for a bounce. Let's see if I can also draw a Fibonacci retracement level from these lows to these highs. Okay. So that doesn't really work out that great because we're already beyond the 61.8 uh, Fib retracement. But, uh, you know, that doesn't mean we can't get a bounce here at 1050. So uh, short term, definitely think that we can see at least a little bit of a bounce at um, just below 1050. But obviously if it breaks this level, not something that I want to really uh, mess with or, or give a, a wide stop with just because... Um, you know, we did break out of this big pattern, uh, and we are, uh, you know, in a downtrend here. So um, just keep that in mind, 1040, 1050, that's the nearest support. All right, next one we're going to look at is, let's go with Kara. So Kara, um, obviously, you know, people have, requested this before and you can see that we came into uh, this downtrend line that I had drawn um, and I mentioned that the last time uh, that I did a video on this 
uh, the downtrend line as resistance right here, 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 and there. And there, I obviously got some flack from people when I said that it was most likely going to get rejected there. Um, and you can see that, you know, what happened. You know, we're already down uh, $2 from that range, which is, you know, 22% about um, from there. And another reason why we got rejected there is based off of these lows right here. So it was a retest of those lows. Previous high got rejected there as well as the downtrend line so kind of a um, you know very high odds that we were going to get some kind of a consolidation lower um, from there so on the other end we're coming into um, a support area this would be the first test of this support area since breaking over it so uh, it was resistance right here right around 660 and I'm going to lower it just a little bit to about the close of this candle right there about 656 yeah right where it's at so resistance resistance all these candles getting resistance and then we see how we broke over it and then we didn't test we didn't break over it and then retest it and bounce so this coming back into it is going to be the first actual retest of this um, resistance that we broke over so Another thing that I can draw right here is this trend line. Let's see if I can draw it pretty nicely. So that's pretty decent right here, this uptrend line as well. And that matches up perfectly with that 650 level. So if you're bullish on Cara, you want to see a bounce off of this 650 level between 650 and 6 six dollars let's say and you really want to see this trend line hold for Cara okay if it breaks we're likely going to come back down and retest these lows at 450 so um, if you're trying to initiate a new long position you know this would be the area between 650 and six dollars uh, right in this range right there also have the 200 day moving average so we could flash below here and then hammer up um, you know, not pay, making any predictions, uh, just kind of going over uh, potential uh, circumstances. All right, I'm going to cover Facebook next. All right, so Facebook, obviously an incredibly bullish stock. You know, just zoom out here. Very bullish, okay? Very, very bullish. Okay, so we can all agree on that. Long run, Facebook is very bullish. In the short term, here, Facebook needs to hold uh, this level right here. So we've got bounces off of this trend line many times. You can see it's especially or particularly important right here recently. How many touches have we gotten against this trend line? You can see that it really likes this level. So we've got to hold this level um, right here because. If it breaks, more than likely we're going to be heading, uh, we're going to see a nice dip on Facebook. Um, obviously, this is uh, in a massive uptrend here for a very long time. So we can assume that that dip um, is going to get bought. It likes to bounce off of this 200-day moving average. You can see here's a bounce, there's a bounce, there's a bounce right there. So if we dip anywhere near that 200 day moving average that's going to be a buying opportunity uh, but in the short term um, if this breaks we are going to be heading lower and that's something that you want to be looking for because you can make money um, on the downside another thing that you want to look at here is we had what looked like um, a breakout here on this day and I'll just draw that right uh, there so we broke over this resistance right here, and then you can see that we just broke back below it with a bearish engulfing candle, and then a second day we closed uh, below it right there. So it didn't hold this breakout, um, so at this point it's looking like a false uh, breakout, and then if we break these lows here, uh, that's going to be a good short signal. So that's something you may want to look for on Facebook. Next is NVDA. All right, 
right, so let's see what we can see on NVDA. Okay, well, this is perfect. I'm glad that we're covering NVDA after this um, Facebook. So this was a uh, uh, breakdown. You know, we broke out of this box right here, broke it, and then we broke back above it. And this is a great, great long signal. So there's a saying that from false moves come swift moves in the opposite direction okay and what that means is this was a false move obviously because it bounced hugely back above it okay and this was a great long signal here for NVDA particularly because you know if you zoom out here NVDA is just incredibly bullish I mean we've gone from $20 all the way up to sixty dollars so you really want to take the opportunity to take these bullish signals so let's say you know you try to short it right here um, and then you get stopped out when it broke back above this is when you want to switch to the long side um, because you can see a really nice move exactly like we did right there so from false moves and then we confirm that it was a false move by a break in here you see swift moves in the opposite direction. And just so you know that I'm not blowing smoke uh, up your ass, um, I've got a really great example of um, Apple right here. So Apple uh, right here broke below. I'm not going to zoom out uh, that much, but this was a clean break of support right here. Okay, very clean break of support right here with heavy volume. Look at that, okay? Then we held a one day lower and then gapped up big with heavy volume the next day. And you can see that this marked the bottom for this stock. So these, this was a false move and it was confirmed by this candle right here. You can see it just whipped hard up after that, retested it, and you can see it just didn't look back since then. So uh, definitely a setup that you want to... Um, learn or know and definitely put um, in your trading arsenal. All right, the next one we're going to take a look at is WB. Okay, WB. Um, obviously, somebody has uh, requested this before. Uh, we have this really nice uptrend line right here. And I'm just going to move it a little bit so it actually touches that must have drawn that line in haste so here is that uh, trend line here touch 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 I mean this is just a, a straight up stock not something that I want to um, short you can just use this trend line as uh, something to trade against you can um, use it as a trailing stop potentially if you're uh, still long at this time um, but you know, if it keeps on riding up, you know, no point in, in selling it until that trend line breaks. Uh, that, and the reason you do that is because you're going to be able to get uh, the majority of the move. Most of the time, stocks don't just fall from the sky. Okay, it's not going to go from here all the way down to 30. Uh, can that happen? Totally, 100%. But the odds are that you're going to get some kind of a signal ahead of time and some kind of warning um, ahead of time. Usually, you know, players with uh, big pockets usually have information a little bit quicker uh, than us retail um, traders and investors. So they'll be selling uh, before it drops and you'll get that signal. So, uh, but we haven't gotten that signal yet. It's riding this trend. So ride it until the wheels fall off. Uh, another thing that I want to touch here is look at this beautiful break over this resistance right here you can see once it broke over that range we more than doubled in price almost tripled in price uh, right there since breaking over this very very clean level there's a touch there's a touch touch broke over it really nicely all right next one we're going to take a look at is LITE And I'm going to switch to the weekly time frame. All right, there's not really much I can see on uh, LIT, so I'm just going to skip it. I'm going to speed things up a little bit here um, as we're running 
30 minutes into this video, uh, so I usually don't like to take more than 40 minutes uh, for these videos. Okay, so IPHI, and if I see something, you know, significant, I'm definitely going to stay with it and, and, and point it out, so, uh, but I'm only going to cover these quality setups here. All right, so, um, let's see, why do I have this resistance drawn there? It must be just from this daily chart. Okay, so yeah, so we've got some resistance up here at about $43, $44 right there. Another thing that you want to note here is we've also got a really nice uptrend. Uh, over here there's a touch, here's a touch, there's a touch. So if we head down here anywhere near $33, $31, that's going to be a good buying opportunity. Okay, a low risk buying opportunity. Um, until then, not seeing that great of levels. You can kind of see some support right around here, about $34, $35, but you know, nothing, nothing really that great. So um, I, I would really be interested in uh, nothing more than buying down here below $33 to $31. And if it broke that trend line, then I would no longer uh, want to be along that stock. But up here, you know, not really interested in initiating any new longs um, or shorts at this point. All right, next, let's take a look at, uh, and I'll cover some more, uh, the more popular names here, just so that I can, uh, you know, get the most uh, bang for your buck here in uh, please the most followers. So ILMN. <coughs> Alright, so ILMN uh, looked like a great breakout here. Here's a trend line break right there, right there, right there, and we finally broke over it. And here we are. And then we broke down pretty big here. And what does this remind you of? Well, I can tell you what it reminds me of, and that's Guild. Guild saw a really nice breakout. There's a trend line, down trend line, very tough. Then it breaks over it, and then we saw a huge breakdown right here. And you can see that since doing that, it hasn't really recovered. Okay, so that's kind of something that you want to keep in mind here um, for ILMN. Uh, not saying that uh, ILMN is going to follow suit um, like Guild did, but something just to keep in mind here uh, that you want to look for. Um, but we are at some major, major support. We've got lots of touches down here, about 132 to 127. Touch here, touch lower, there's a touch, and you can see that's exactly where we stopped at uh, on this big drop uh, right there. Just above 132 was that uh, low of the day right there. So if you're bullish on ILMN, you really want to see this uh, level hold right there and it's not really a level that I would be initiating uh, new shorts either so a uh, low risk um, buying opportunity down here between 132 and 127 if it breaks 126 I'm no longer going to be interested in that um, for a long so that's a low risk um, buy down there um, and what I mean by low risk is that your uh, risking if you actually get stopped out if it breaks below 126 that's only you know what uh, two percent loss um, but your potential gain um, is much greater and that's only if you actually sell if it breaks below 126 if it breaks below 126 and it's no longer a low risk trade because you're just gonna let it drop um, on you some more so keep those stops tight and if you do, you can definitely trade against these levels down here. All right, next we're going to take a look at BABA. All right, so BABA, definitely something that you want to look for here. Um, same kind of thing as Facebook that we were discussing earlier. Uh, looked like a little breakout right here out of this tight range. We did not hold that breakout. We broke lower right here and now we're back in the opposite direction as well as below this trend line 
that has been giving us bounces for quite a while right there for a few months right there so we broke over this range that's a false breakout broke below this box broke below this trend line more than likely in the short term uh, Alibaba is going to be heading lower um, because of those uh, few things but overall if you take a look at this daily chart here this daily chart looks really good so if we get um, a drop lower anywhere near 85 is going to be a really good buying opportunity you can see that it was resistance right here right there and then we broke over that range right there and you can see that we saw a really nice breakout since then so short term definitely going to see some downside um, but longer term uh, we can definitely see some bounces uh, from this lower end right here so look for those uh, two things on Alibaba next one we're going to take a look at is AMD alright so AMD uh, you know <laughs> every time I do a video on AMD um, I get a lot of um, messages uh, about it um, and uh, you know, everybody me, messages me about, you know, they say, do you know why it broke the trend line? Well, it doesn't matter why it broke the trend line, okay? It could be because uh, Trump is president or Hillary's president. It doesn't matter, okay? Um, you know, they're sending me news articles about why AMD dropped um, and that that's a reason that you shouldn't be worried. Well, it doesn't matter why a stock drops. The ma what matters is that the stock dropped, okay? I don't need a reason. You don't need a reason. The reason doesn't matter. So we broke this trend line. Uh, this is a pretty vertical trend line. And what I mean by that is the angle is pretty, pretty steep. And even the most bullish stocks um, can't keep up this, this straight up range. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, AMD, you know, bounce from uh, lower here but in the near term we did break this trend line and another thing that I'm seeing right here in the last video I did on AMD I mentioned this resistance up here at about seven dollars and notice how we're seeing a reaction from that level so another thing that you want to look at here is this right there so we've got a new little downtrend line so if you're bearish on AMD you want to see this level keep on getting rejected and this is a low risk uh, short and again low risk meaning that you can enter in here at uh, and I'm not uh, telling you what to do I'm just kind of going over potential um, trading strategies and just to give you some ideas about trading in general so um, you can short up here you know what it set 675 and if it breaks over the trend line you know you're looking at a very small loss you know maybe it goes to 705 um, and then you get stopped out right there for that um, on that short but then on the downside you know if you end up uh, if that trade ends up working out you're looking at you know a uh, two dollar and uh, 20 cent drop right here 25 cent drop on uh, AMD versus a 25 cent uh, loss so just kind of going over some risk versus reward there um, on uh, AMD so AMD we've got this downtrend line that's going to act as resistance the 705 level that's going to act as resistance and you want to look for on the downside here is that 200 day moving average potentially to act as support it's also the 60 uh, 61.8 percent Fibonacci retracement level and that's based off of uh, these lows to these highs and that gives you this uh, 61.8 Fibonacci retracement level and that matches up well with the 200 day moving average alright guys that's the last one that I'm gonna be doing thank you for giving me the opportunity to do these videos for you I really like it um, Again, uh, this is Taylor from thetradinganalyst.com, and I will see you next time.